Welcome to Oxford News This Week. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Terry Stiles. In this week's news, a 38-year-old man is arrested for trashing Oxford Lake Subdivision and Leonard picks a grand marshal for their strawberry festival parade and a boy with a passion looks to help his grandmother and many more. Stay tuned and learn more about these stories and others. The Oxford News begins right now. The deadline for applicants looking to become the latest member of the Oxford Board of Education has been set by district officials for July 14th. Mike Swegg, who in November 2016 was elected to a four-year term on the school board, has resigned six months into his term. In order to be considered, all applicants must be United States citizens, residents of Oxford Community School District, at least 18, and a registered voter. Those interested should submit a letter of intent to Superintendent Tim Throne at the Oxford District Office. When it comes to Oxford Township's future in terms of development and amenities, what residents want to see depends on who you ask. This spring, township officials invited residents to participate online in a 25-question survey to collect input for updating the existing master plan. A total of 350 residents and business owners took the survey, and within that survey, it was revealed 120 people believe the quality of life in the township will decline over the next five years and only 88 said it will improve. The board expects to wrap the update plan up by early next year. A 38-year-old Oxford man allegedly caused significant property damage in the Oxford Lake subdivision last week and was arrested by village police for driving under the influence of alcohol. Police were called to a home where a 48-year-old man reported seeing the vehicle leaving the scene of destruction. Police later found the vehicle parked on the roadway near the driveway of, the, of a home. Police asked the resident if he had been driving and he allegedly confirmed that he had. According to the report, the man failed several sobriety tests and was then placed under arrest and transported to the Oakland County Jail. It's hard to imagine Edison Township without Bob and Gwen Godkin. Whenever a need arises and whenever there's a local event, they're there. For years, the couple have worked tirelessly to help preserve the rural township's rich history and in turn have become an integral part of the township. This time, the couple served as the Grand Marshals for the 65th annual Strawberry Festival Parade to show towns, the town's appreciation. Congratulations to the Godkins. Mike Gula loves cars and his grandmother, so he decided to use one to help the other. Gula is organizing a charity car show for Sunday, August 13th, in the parking lot of the Legacy Center. The event will run from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and it's free to enter and free to visit. However, participants and spectators are encouraged to make voluntary donations to the Michigan chapter of the ALS Association, which fights disease on four fronts, medical research, care services, public education, and public policy. Gula's 70-year-old grandmother, Judy Tamagio, Ajnino, I'm sorry, crucified that one, was diagnosed with ALS two years ago. Learn more about Gula and the event on this week's Our Community Access. Over the previous weekend, Oakland County Sheriff Deputies Jim Williard and Brandy Mendocino tackled their first assignment on the seat of mountain bikes patrolling the Seymour Lake celebration. The deputies say the bikes are their arsenal because they are equipped with lights, sirens, and valuable tools in law enforcement. The bikes will also be used to patrol the Pollyann Trail, township parks, and local subdivisions. Williard said that they will be on the trail as often as they can be. Rose Podubny isn't spending her golden years rocking away in a comfortable chair watching television and knitting. No, the 88-year-old longtime resident of Oxford is still working as a housekeeper at the McLaren Oakland Medical Facility in Oxford Township. 
Director of Operations at the facility, Lynette Smith, said Rose is probably one of the hardest workers even though she can't do as much as she used to do here. Now, in January 1997, Radubny, uh, Padubny, I'm sorry, officially retired, but she continues to work there at least once a week for a few hours. Radubny advises her fellow senior citizens to keep their minds and bodies active. That is the main thing, she said. That's it for Oxford News this week. If you'd like to learn more about these stories and others, pick up a copy of the Oxford Leader newspaper, or you can catch us right here at OCCTV.org, and that's our website, or on YouTube, and of course, your regular cable channel, Charter Channel 191 or AT&T Channel 99. Coming up soon on OCTV's our very own Cody Wright with the Sports Report, and you won't want to miss Auto Talk and Science in the News with Dave Kenny. I'm Terry Stiles, and this is Oxford News This Week, where we bring your news closer to home. And I'm Elgin Nichols. Remember, always be kind to your friends and neighbors, and thanks for watching. Welcome to Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny, and these stories are taken from the publication New Scientist. In our first story, hairs all over the body use the same two chemical signaling pathways to communicate with each other, a finding that might help us better understand baldness. Hair doesn't constantly grow. Instead, each hair follicle goes through a cycle of growing, dying, and resting. Previous research has found that two chemical signaling pathways, called WNT and BMP, play a role in regulating when the hairs on the backs of mice grow. Now, Maxim Plikas at the University of California, Irvine, and his team have used mathematical modeling to see if WNT and BMP signaling might play a role across the whole body. They found that waves of WNT and BMP signaling can accurately explain the growth cycles of all the hairs on a mouse. This suggests that hairs all over the body use the same chemical language to coordinate each other's growth. Waves of WNT signaling spreading from hair to hair activate follicle growth, followed by waves of BMP signaling that shut down the stem cells in these follicles halting growth. <clears throat> Think of it like in track and field when people run and pass the baton, says Plikas. One runner is an active hair follicle and is passing off an activating signal to another hair follicle. That is the first time, a, this is the first time, that is, that a model of many hair follicles has accurately predicted growth patterns across an entire mouse. The team based their model on observations of WNT and BMP signaling in smaller areas and extended it to cover the whole body. The model predicted certain patterns of growth which the team were then able to identify in real mice. Plikas hopes to use similar models to inform efforts to regulate the WNT BMP system with drugs, an approach that many that may, that is, spread waves of growth back into balding areas. I can't wait. And down in Antarctica, one of the largest icebergs on record has broken away from an ice shelf in Antarctica. Researchers who have been monitoring a huge crack in the Larsen Sea ice shelf, which had left a vast iceberg more than a quarter the size of whales hanging by a thread, say the rift has finally completed its path through the ice. A 5,800 square kilometer iceberg weighing more than a trillion metric tons has now calfed the team from the Swansea University-led Midas Project, said. The final breakthrough happened between Monday and Wednesday and was detected in data from NASA's Aqua Modis satellite instrument. The calving of the iceberg, which is likely to be named A68, reduces the size of the Larsen Sea ice shelf by around 12% and will change the landscape of the Antarctic Peninsula forever, the scientists said. We have been anticipating this event for months and have been surprised how long it took for the rift to break through the final few kilometers of ice, says Adrian Lookman of Swansea University, lead investigator of the Midas Project. The iceberg is one of the largest recorded and its future progress is diff difficult to predict. It may remain one piece, but is more likely to break into fragments. Some of the ice may remain in the area for decades, while parts of the iceberg may drift north into warmer waters. Although the iceberg weighs a trillion metric tons, it was already floating before it calved away, so it will have no immediate effect on sea level. And on the particle physics front, there is a new member of the particle family, and it's a real heavyweight. The so-called XICC++ is a baryon, the family of particles that make up most ordinary matter. 
Baryons contain three quarks, fundamental particles that come in six different flavors, but many combinations have yet to be observed. This latest find by researchers on the LHC Beak experiment at CERN's Large Hadron Collider is the first baryon confirmed to contain two heavier quarks known as charm quarks. The third constituent is an up quark. Unlike in other baryons where the three quarks rotate around each other, the two charm quarks are thought to set at the center of the XICC++ with the lighter up quark orbiting them. All that mass means the XICC++ weighs in at around 3621 mega electron volts, four times heavier than the protein, proton that is, <laughs> in line with the theorist, theorist expect, expectations. <laughs> can get that word out. Studying the new particle could help physicists test quantum chromodynamics, the theory of the strong force which holds quarks together in baryons. Wow. Well, that's it for this edition of Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny. Stay tuned to Oxford Community Television. What's going on, Oxford fans? Cody right here with the Sports Report. We have been following the Rex Summer Softball Games all summer, and we've had a great time. This week, we are going to check back in with our senior softball and also take a look at the U16 girls. First off, the senior guys took on Clarkson at Seymour Lake Park last Monday and took the win to new lengths, ending in a mercy. We had a lot of fun and had a helper from Clarkson. His name was Mitch. Check it out. But you can, you can hang out here, and then every once in a while, we'll put a headset on you, and you, we'll let you talk a little bit, too, okay? Yep. Okay. Hello, this is OCTV's coverage of senior softball here at Seymour Lake Park. I got my buddy Mitch from, where are you from, Clarkston? Yes. And now who, your grandpa plays for the Clarkston team, right? Yeah. And what's his name? Daddy. Daddy, okay. Well, good. Uh, is he any good? Yes. Do you play ball too? Yes. Okay. Well, you know what? We're going to watch a game. I was wondering if you could do me a favor and say you're watching OCTV. Okay? All right. One, two, three, say. TV. TV. There we go. We will be right back with the game. Mitch was a lot of fun to call the game with, and he kept us on our toes. We also got a word with Larry Jensen, an Oxford athlete, along with his family after the game. Everything was high spirits. All right, we're here with Larry Jensen and your family. You want to introduce your family? Sure, I will. This is Taylor, granddaughter. Hi, Taylor. This is Hello. Skylar, a granddaughter, and my wife, Ellen. Hello. Oh, well, good. Do you go to Grandpa's games a lot? No, not no. a lot. Of this is the first one this decade. What? <laughs> Are you kidding? Your grandfather's really good. Yes, he's very good. Yes, he is, isn't he? Now, you've been to a lot of his games, haven't you? Well, previous years. Yeah. Yes. Well, I know you have a sports family and your sons and that. You have a, how many kids do you have? We have three, three boys. Three boys. And uh, let's talk a little bit about some of your boys and what they've done. The uh, oldest boy is now a principal of an elementary school in Troy. The uh, middle boy is a, uh, played his football at Michigan and then played in 11 years in the NFL. And now he's retired living in Petoskey. Okay. And our youngest son is in mortgages. Um, and he's jumped from a bunch of different uh, organizations, but he's with Capital One. Okay. So you had a lot of success with your kids. Capital Mortgage. Capital Mortgage. Oh, Capital Mortgage. Okay. There we go. Get it right, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a recent change. So. <laughs> well, there we go. Well, you have a beautiful family. It looks like you got another generation going here. Yes, we do, and we're proud of them. We're grateful for good health, I'll tell well, you. We're proud of you, too. You're a good ball player, great guy. <laughs> Larry Jansen. <laughs> well, it was a good day today. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. There we go, Larry Jansen and his beautiful, Thank beautiful you. family. Good to see you guys. And, and one out there we couldn't get on. <laughs> <laughs> we're proud of her. <laughs> Thank you very much, Larry. All righty. It was a great game, that's for sure, and it was great to see the guys get another win. However, our buddy Mitch from Clarkston had mixed feelings. Well, okay, there you had it, 23 to 8. I thought you guys were going to be better than that. Yes. What happened? Please. No, oh, you want to hold the thing. Anyways, we want... <laughs> I'm going to lose my job here. Anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching OCTV's coverage of senior softball against Clarkston. You guys were pretty good. You got a few hits. This is my buddy Mitch. I want to thank Mitch for helping out today. And uh, for me, Rod Wright and uh, Cody Wright. And, of course, our cameraman, thank you for everything today. So we'll see you at the next game. Good night. Say goodbye. Bye.
Like I said, it was a lot of fun. And you can't forget about the girls. That's right, the U16 girls took on Troy at Seymour Lake Park and took the win in a close call, eight to seven. Troy was a great matchup, and we got an interview with the coach and a few of the girls after the game. Check it out. You stay here, Steve. Stay here, Steve. Stay <laughs> stay here. <laughs> Get over here, Steve. Hey, you see, that was a great game. I know I know it come out with the, with, with the loss, but I'll tell you, you did a good job of, of getting the girls ready. Appreciate it. Well, uh, that's what you try to do. You prepare before every game, and uh, these girls do a good job preparing before every game as well. Coming out, they have the leadership with all the girls. Uh, we don't have just one leader. You have uh, 13 leaders out there, and um, yeah, they did a good job preparing for the game. Played a great game, except for obviously that last inning. Um, but other than that, I'm proud of the girls, and they did a great job all around. Good pitching too. Good job out there pitching. Thank you. You got to play short afterwards, right? No. No. Where were you? Where they put you after? I was sitting. Oh, you were sitting. Okay. <laughs> well, you got a great catcher. Great arm. You throw some strikes from behind the plate. You nailed a couple girls on the on the steals. Good job. Thank you. And now, where do you play? Uh, where do you play ball in school? Do you uh, play at the high school? Yeah. This season, it was second at the beginning of the season and right field towards the end. But I play everything but catcher. Just and depends which season at, what I'm school? in. What school? What school? Athens. Oh, you go to Athens. You go to Athens? Athens too? too, yeah. Okay. We'll have to look out for Athens next year, won't we? Well, good job, girls. Thanks a lot, Coach. I hope you enjoy Oxford. Uh, take them, they, We got a uh, Frosty Boy. Take them to Frosty Boy afterwards. Oh, you just good. take it right out of here. <laughs> Anyways, I want... <laughs> a little plug. A little yeah, plug, a little right? plug. We, we'd plug our local... <laughs> local uh, places. Anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching uh, OCTV's coverage of Girls 16U Softball. Good job, Troy Raptors. And come back again, okay? We will. Thank All you right. for having me. Good night. Wow, that was a great game, girls. Have you, you came, that was a, what they call a walk-off. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, where's Sam? Where's the Where's Sam that got the triple? Hiding. Right in there. Good job, Sam, today. And I want to say, uh, Zoe, that that double, great. Is that the best hit you've ever had? No, but it was pretty good. It was pretty good, though. Yeah, it was the walk the walk off blooper, right? <laughs> you know what? We had. Uh, where's Megan? She had like three singles today. Awesome job today. Thank you. And also, Natalie, you got three singles. Where's Natalie? Uh, good job. Yeah, man. Did you know you were hitting that well? No, I didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, I know the bottom of the order really came alive for the, for the, uh, the top of the order. Good job out there. So we haven't had a walk-off yet this year, girls, so good job. It was a great week for Rec Sports here in Oxford, and we look forward to another. However, that is all for now. If you wish to catch any of these games live, head on out to Seymour Lake Park. Summer will be gone before you know it, so don't procrastinate. Get outside and enjoy it while it's here. You can also catch our coverage of the games on our YouTube page, which can be accessed through our website at OCCTV.org. There's plenty for you to look into, so what are you waiting for? That is OCCTV.org. And that should wrap it up for this week's sports. Until next time, I'm Cody Wright. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Julie Hogan. Welcome to your weekly calendar of events, where we feature your weekly community events for Oxford and Addison Township, including charity, special fundraisers, and general community information. If you or your organization would like to, us to help you get your message out to our viewing public, please contact us at 248-628-9658 or go to our website, OCCTV.org. Round up your family and friends and come join us at the annual Oxford Lone Ranger Parade and Festival on Saturday, August 5th in downtown Oxford. In case you didn't know, the original Lone Ranger, Brace Beamer, was a fellow resident of Oxford along with his horse, Silver, who lived on his farm. This event was created to share the values that the Lone Ranger held dear to his heart. The festival begins at 10 a.m. with all kinds of great events for young and old. The kids will love the Kids Corral, which hosts a mechanical bull, blow-ups, bounce house, petting zoo, and much more. Best of all, it's free. For the rest of the crew, check out all the fun stuff happening in Centennial Park, such as ironwork, log carving, and live entertainment. There will also be great exhibits about the Lone Ranger at our museum. And of course, don't forget the ca to catch the famous parade that starts at 11 a.m. You won't want to miss it. In addition to all the great festival events, the Oxford United Methodist Church invites you to an ice cream social from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. held at the church located at 21 East Burdick Street in Oxford. Tickets are only $3 and help support great church missions and educational programs. Some of these include the Community Free Meals Program and a youth ministry program that serve our community children. If interested in helping this worthy cause, you can make donations or purchase tickets by calling Bob Willoughby at 
2357. Speaking of Lone Ranger Parade, attention all businesses. The Oxford Leader and Sherman Publications are sponsoring a contest in the effort to motivate local businesses to build some great floats. They're donating a six-week advertising campaign valued at $1,500 to the business that constructs the best float. With a little planning, a trailer, and some help from your staff and friends, you can create a float that not only enhances the parade experience for all, but promotes your business and shows your community spirit. Businesses interested in donating money, services, or volunteering for the Lone Ranger Parade effort, please contact Rod Charles or Mary Ellen Faulkner via email at homeofthemask at gmail.com or by calling 248-371-9100. The Oxford Chamber of Commerce would like to make networking not only helpful to your business, but fun as well. To help with this goal, the folks at the Chamber have scheduled great monthly events to help you meet people that are potential customers or referral partners. This is also a great resource to locate services you may need within your own community. Best of all, these events are free. The monthly Mix and Mingle is a casual, happy hour style event that will provide you the opportunity to both socialize and make new connections. The next Mix and Mingle is scheduled for Thursday, July 27th at the Boulder Point Golf Club located at One Champion Circle in Oxford. The event will be held from 5 to 7 p.m. and features amazing food and company. The second event held monthly is called the Coffee Connect. This is also an informal meeting where you can enjoy a cup of coffee or tea with other folks on their way to work. It's a great way to start your day. The next Coffee Connect event will be held on Tuesday, August 1st between 8 and 9 a.m. at Real Estate One, located at 110 South Washington Street in downtown Oxford. If you would like more information about these or other upcoming events, please go to the website oxfordchamber.net and click on events or call 248-628 0410. Quick reminder to bring a seat and come jo join your neighbors every Thursday for Downtown Oxford's Concerts in the Park. This event is free and runs every Thursday until August 24th. The open mic starts at 6 p.m. with a concert starting at 7. The next event is this Thursday, July 20th, featuring a group called Escaping Pavement, which will entertain you with country, folk, and bluegrass music. You can get the upcoming schedule and featured groups by going to their website, downtownoxford.org, and clicking on events. If you own a business, belong to an organization, or are a local resident wishing to show your support for our school programs, music concerts, or any of the many programs broadcast by our television station, you could become a sponsor or underwriter for OCTV. A promotional spot will be created just for you, and our broadcast announcers will give you continuous recognition. It's a great way to promote your organization. For more information, contact our station manager, Bill Service, at 248-628-9658, or email him at manager at OCCTV.org. Don't forget, you can also locate your OCTV program schedule by going to our website and clicking on Schedule. There you'll find a list of great OCTV programs, dates, and times. One program I recommend you check out is our Oxford News This Week, hosted by Elgin Nichols and Terry Stiles. This duo will be sure to fill you in on all the latest news happening in your community. Also in this program, Cody Wright will fill you in on the latest community sports, and Dave Kenny will follow with what's new in the automotive news. Tune in and check them out. This is Oxford Community TV's weekly calendar of events, and I'm your host, Julie Hogan. Join us next week to learn more about new and exciting events happening in your neighborhood. Until then, make it a great week, and thank you for watching. Welcome to this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and these stories are taken from the publication Automotive News. In our first story, Ford Motor Company will replace Chevrolet as the presenting sponsor of the 2017 Woodward Dream Cruise, Metro Detroit's annual celebration of car culture. The Blue Oval will appear on signage and other media surrounding the 23rd annual cruise, which takes place August 19th. Make a note. Ford inked a one-year deal with cruise officials with an option to continue the partnership next year. A spokesman declined to reveal the price Ford paid for the sponsorship. The cruise is expected to attract 1.2 million people and about 40,000 classic cars. 
And over at Audi, the retooled A8 will become Audi's first production vehicle capable of level 3 autonomous driving, the company said at the sedan's launch on July 11th. Audi becomes the first car company to claim to offer level 3 capability on a production vehicle, which allows hands-off capability but requires the driver to take back control at any time. The car can drive autonomously at speeds up to 37 miles per hour in a setting Audi calls Traffic Jam Pilot. The Traffic Jam Pilot will only be allowed on highways where up oncoming traffic is separated. The car's sensors and satellite navigation will confirm that conditions are right after which the driver will activate the function. A series of audio and visual alerts will tell the driver when to retake control, says Mirko Reuter, Audi's head of automated driving. Audi will embed the technology when the customer orders the car with the optional automated driving pack, but the technology will not be activated until legal and homologation framework has been approved. Once that has happened, drivers will likely have to return to the dealer to activate the technology, Reuters said. The A8, which goes on sale in Europe before the year end and in the U.S. in late spring or early summer 2018, also is the first car equipped with a laser scanner or light LIDAR to help feed information on surroundings to a central driving assisting controller called ZFAS. Cars fitted with the autonomous driving feature will also be able to park themselves in garages without the need for the driver to be sitting in the car. That function will also need to be activated by the dealer after the system has been given approval. Other technology on the redesigned A8 includes an active suspension system powered by a 48-volt electrical network. An electric motor on each wheel adapts the suspension on that corner of the car based on road conditions which are monitored for bumps by a camera scanning the road. The 48-volt network also powers a mild hybrid system that is fitted to all five of the a 8 engine's options, uh, meaning all versions are partially electrically driven. The belt-driven alternator starter motor helps reduce fuel consumption by delivering enough energy to power the car briefly from rest before the combustion engine takes over. A plug-in hybrid version of the A8 made it to a 3-liter V6 gas engine will provide 31 miles of pure electric driving, Audi said. The plug-in hybrid will arrive in a later date, Audi said without providing more details. The launch engines in the U.S. will be a 3-liter V6 gasoline and a 12-cylinder gasoline engine following later. The A8 will come with the option of a four-wheel steering that reduces the turning circle below that of a smaller A4, Audi said. The system also ensures a high level of handling stability. The prof profile of the new car is more like a four-door coupe than a sedan Audi head of design, Mark Lichta said at the unveiling. The dashboard has been simplified to reduce the number of buttons. The rotary dial from the current car has now gone and replaced with a large 10.1-inch touchscreen that Audi says blends almost invisibly into the dash. A second touchscreen below controls the... Uh, heating and cooling functions, and Audi says its touchscreens are made safer by using haptic feedback. The A8 will be available in standard and long wheelbase versions and will be built at Audi's plant in Nectar Sulem, Germany. And on the recall front, Ford recalls 6,000 Edge Fusion and MKZ vehicles in North America. It's recalling about 6,000 Ford Edge Fusion and Lincoln and MKZ 2-liter gasoline vehicles that have been had improperly welded torque converter studs. The automaker said the affected vehicles, which come with the 6F35 transmission, could lose power, increasing the risk of a crash. Ford says it's not aware of any accidents or injuries related to the problem, and the affected vehicles are the 2017 Ford Edge crossovers built at the Oakville, Ontario assembly plant from April 25th to June 20th, the 2017 Ford Fusion sedans built at Hermosillo, Mexico assembly plant from May 4th to June 19th, and the 2017 Lincoln MKZ sedans, MKZ that is, sedans built at Hermosillo from May 4th to June 19th. In each case, dealers will replace the affected parts for free. <coughs> I hope so. Well, that's all for this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and as always, may the wind be at your back as you cruise down life's highways.